हेलो गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ आर एनाटॉमी सेक्शन नाउ सी टुडे विल बी डीलिंग विद सोल सो एक्चुअली एक्चुअली द फुट राइट सो प्रेटी प्रेटी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक टुडे इज Now see what we'll be doing is in leg we left four muscles, correct? Four muscles we we didn't touch: external hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, and similarly the flexor, if flexor hallucis and digitorum longus. Today we'll be dealing with them. We'll be talking about them. But before that, as usual, right? We'll be watching that how the entire foot is formed we'll see all those all those attachments then we'll add muscles to it but this time first we'll be adding extrinsic muscles so i think by the time we'll complete this much right today's session would be almost complete so tomorrow we'll be adding intrinsic muscles once these muscles are added so entire foot would be complete and then in the next session we'll be inserting all those nerves and vessels so that's how we intend to finish up the entire lower limb and obviously then there will be the grand test right so lots of ground to be covered today so let's start straight away and yes i was unable to answer all the mails because still there are so many mails pending so gradually i am trying to answer as much as possible uh <laughs> right say the reason behind it is why i wrote soul of soul right is is because this topic itself is beautiful right it's actually very beautiful because it's like just this much area and and then there will be so many intricate structures and everyone will be helping each other for for the specific movement and and you will find it really really very interesting very amazing so that's why i gave the name soul of soul okay all right let's start with something which is already known to us right you already know these bones but still we'll be just going through all of them at a very high pace right so that's the tibia this one is fibula and this one is that's right it is tellus tellus would be this is like boat shaped bone and that is navicular and then we have got all those cuneiforms right cuneiforms and then there are three cuneiforms right over here we are watching just two so so immediately in the next image we'll just rotate the foot slightly to to have a look at those bones right just in this first image i'm writing all the full names then to as usual we'll be going for the all those shortcuts right and this is a big calcaneus right and this calcaneus will be talking to cuboid right and they are collectively called as the tarsal so they are tarsal so these are metatarsals right metatarsals and then we have got all those phalanges right we'll be dealing with phalanges in a in more detail so right now i'm not talking much about any of those so here it is the another view right various views are there just for your orientation proper orientation so here it is like so calcaneum that's the talus right exactly this is the navicular that's the first cuneiform so we'll say it's c1 and this is cuboid so we are writing c u right let's have one more look this is what tells that actually it is the calcaneum 
right which is just in association with the cuboid and another important thing is that if we see that say calcanium or oh, sorry talus right talus navicular all those cuneiform cuboid what they are forming this part right that part this is nothing but tarso metatarsal joint right tarso metatarsal joint or the tm joint right we'll say tm joint so there are five we'll call this thing as first and this thing as five and rest of them accordingly right regarding the phalanges in phalanges we'll be dealing with many interphalangeal joint so first thing first between the metatarsal and the phalanx so i'm talking about this 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 one and this one right so they will be the joints which will be between metatarsal so we'll say metatarso and the phalanx so phalangeal joint right so from this point onwards we'll start telling them m p joint this orientation is very important because when we'll be dealing with all those muscles muscular attachment so at that point we need to say that okay this is the tendon which will be lying on the base of say pip or dip or mp right at that point so there should not be any confusion another important point see one two three right three phalanges so this portion this one this one right the entire foot is here right so with respect to that this is proximal and this one is distal and this one would be intermediate intermediate phalanx right but we need to talk about we need to talk about this portion and this portion these joints so the, there are two joints so one joint is near and second joint is far so we'll call this thing as proximal and this another joint as distal which, which type of joints are there they are between yes yes we'll, we'll be talking about that clinical part but later so between between the phalanx so that's why we'll call them interphalangeal joint right so inter phalangeal joint so that's why this is proximal interphalangeal joint this is distal interphalangeal joint from this point onwards we'll call this thing as pip proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joint right so we talked about all these joints tm joint mp joint pip dip right that means that portion here right and then all those yeah now in the case of big toe because there are two phalanx so there will be just one joint and nothing like distal nothing like proximal because it is just one so we'll just tell this as interphalangeal joint so that's the entire scenario which we'll be dealing with moving further okay what we see in this case is that the entire foot right it is not flat it is in the form of arch right it is this arch which gives us the gripping effect when we walk right it give it it grips grips the ground now obviously we cannot compare it with monkeys right because there there the capability is much higher but still right we do have those arches so there is one arch which is from side to side right which is from side to side so what i'm talking about is that 
it is like this right there is one arch which is side to side right so that is it is the base which forms the arch right it is the base base of those metatarsals and they form side to side arch side to side arch we'll also see that there are arches even in the base right so that is where there will be several ligaments which will be supporting it right so if you if you really join all the heads of the metatarsal so they are not in one plane they are in fact like this like this right that's how they are they, they form the arch when we watch from the side so it is curved from end to end now now the see see these are the base right these are the base that's what we are talking about right these are the base but when we talk about the head so obviously all of them right now let's take another color over here so these are the heads right these heads they lie in one flat plane so that's why when you put the foot on the ground right so all the heads they are in one plane but uh, but uh, uh, say the base right they are in the form of arch so thus it it forms that that curved effect right so these heads they are in one flat plane and this one prominent thing the prominent tubercle there is a prominent tubercle which is at the base of fifth metatarsal so just keep in mind because we'll be dealing with it at a later stage so just keep in mind and one more important thing if you see right, so i'll just write this prominent tubercle right i just write over here prominent tubercle and base of m5 right metatarsal m5 okay this bone this is cuboid right and see cuboid is with m5 m4 right the rest are with respective cuneiform to to just have a clear vision uh, well you can see it from here to see it properly i just need to remove this yeah now you can see right so this is cuneiform one this is cuneiform two that's the cuneiform three and this one is m1 this one is metatarsal two that's metatarsal three three clear this one this one this one and in this next image where we watch that it is the cuneiform which is with m4 and m5 right just for the clarity right okay yeah this one would be calcaneum now we have removed all the metatarsals right so that's where we see with still more clarity because there will be articulate articulating surfaces so this is cuneiform one cuneiform two cuneiform three and then that one is cuboid and same thing one two three right so metatarsal one two three that would be with four and five but no i am not interested in telling you this right so this though you have already understood what i am interested in watch for the arch see see the arch got it this is the arch this is what i am interested in explaining to you let's see they are all not in one plane this starts lower this is at a lower end and see in between they are at higher ends so if you just connect all of them that's how the arch is formed right so that's the arch and to end arch and to end 
parte. The way it is, similarly, there is arch of foot, right? From anterior to posterior, right? That arch was from side to side. Similarly, there is one arch and that is from anterior to posterior, right? Anterior to posterior, there is another arch. And these arches, they are vital when you are running, right? This, and that's the reason that those who develop flat foot, they find it extremely difficult because there will be so much pain when, when they try to run, right? Uh, that's cuboid with M4 and M5. That's right. That, that's, what, that's what we saw. Yeah. See, this, this one would be with M4 and M5. And and these are with M3, M3, M2, M M2, M1. Right, you know that. So, okay. So to understand this, right, this entire structure, what we'll see, we'll start with the absolute base. So first we saw the bones. Now we are adding some tissues to that right so here we have actually removed all the soft tissues we removed all the muscles we removed all the vessels nerves everything so that we look at the base structure yeah these arches they work as a spring uh, in the previous image which previous image are we talking about this one this one Now, these arches, they work like spring. And in fact, in fact, these arches, they give tremendous, because there is so much of mechanisms involved, especially in walking and running. And uh, at, at the Olympic level or at an international level, where every split second counts, say, there is, what is, there is one important thing, what is called as the gait analysis. Right, it is called as the gait analysis. Now, so this is like available even for everyone, right? In in only few some reputed stores. What they do is on a treadmill, right? They put the cameras, and then they say, okay, you walk, you run. And when you are running, so it happens like that at time your foot is tilting on right or on left. Say especially in those Garmin watches, right? Good quality Garmin watches. Amongst more than there are an, another 40, 50 parameter, one of the parameter is the balance, shift of the balance between right side and the left side. That is, are you running with an absolute balance? So there the analysis is there. Yes, you have to put those sensors, but as you are running the full marathon, after completion of the marathon, that statistic, when you transfer it on your computer and then when you analyze the data, it really tells that how much weight you were putting on the right side and how much was on the left side. And then it shows like say 49.5 on the left and 50.5 on the right. So that is just half a percent of variation from right to left. But that's how it gives the complete analysis. Right? Along with the cadence, along with the pressure, everything, all the, all the details. Right? Yeah, so this is, this is the cuboid, right? So... Okay, you might, so this is CU, right, cuboid. So that is M4, M5. Okay. So back to our, this part. So here we have removed all the soft tissues, right? All soft tissues, muscles and everything, they, they have been removed. So we are just watching joints and ligaments they are intact right they are intact this is how actually the foot looks like right so here this is currently known to us right calcaneal ligament calcaneal or tendo achilles let's write tendo achilles this is much better 
right because it is tendon but this tendon will be in continuation with something so we'll talk about it right how it really works in in association with one uh, what is called as the plantar epignosis let's see so starting with the first part this is just another look right from the top right so let me write like view 2 and and this is like a top view right view 3 right view 3 now we see things in more detail the real things they are under on the underside of foot that's where the real miracles there the first thing first right this is the portion which we would like to see this is short plantar ligament now from this point onwards right for next few minutes just understand that we are watching the we are understanding the structure one by one right i'll keep on explaining you which one is deeper which one is superficial so this is not the order of dissection here it is like a first i'll be showing you all the structures individually you have understood their orientation that where exactly they are then on that muscle redefined or the ligaments redefined part that is later we'll see right tomorrow or day after tomorrow right now first we are watching short plantar ligament this short plantar ligament this is a deeper structure because actually if you really try to dissect it there is a long plantar ligament on top of it so you have to first remove it then you start watching this short plantar so right now just watch short plantar as short plantar okay and where is it attached that's the point that's the point right this is calcaneum right and this one it has to be cuboid correct so when we are talking about that orientation this orientation is so vital that when we are talking about calcaneum and cuboid so it means we are dealing with that's what we said we are dealing with what was this point right that prominent tubercle right this is m5 it means if it is m5 we are cal measuring from m1 to m5 right it means though this thing looks like that okay right it is at the base actually it is quite on the lateral side right you are getting it correct so that's the connection of short plantar short plantar ligament so what i am preparing you step by step is why i always insisted that see first you have to understand upper limb lower limb thorax then when you go into the abdomen suddenly there will be like like a 3d imagination it will start appearing especially in the pelvis when the structures are small and you have to actually understand that in such a small space there are so many organs and their blood supply nerve supply all everything things will be a bit more complicated when you'll be going into the head and neck when the size of the structure would be smaller and in this much head there will be so many right so over here i'll keep on telling you that that do do try to visualize that this is on the lateral side right that's what i was trying to say okay i think you got my point and and over here see do you remember how we we talked about that peroneus longus right? peroneus longus peroneus longus was coming all the way and then it was telling cuboid it was let me let me take a let me wind around you do you remember that one was coming like this and it was going like this so here is here is that tunnel that groove this is the groove 
this is the guru right so that's the guru for peroneus longus peroneus longus tendon will not make a complete mess of the whole thing step by step right we'll keep on adding one by one structure so we'll first add today all the structures which we have already known right then we'll introduce the newer ones <laughs> yeah that's right that's right you can you can Achha. the next one is see this bigger one right again it is from from calcaneum but this time see the size of the structure right it is like this and all the way this one big one right so we call this thing as long plantar ligament right okay to see where exactly it is attached see now it will give you a very good idea this is calcaneum that's easy but it is attached at the base of right it is attached at the base of starting with m5 correct it is because of that tubercle which you are feeling m4 and m3 true so if if we really draw it right where exactly was was the was the short planter that short planter was over here onto the cuboid correct why we are using planter here planter means because this is plantar surface right this is plantar surface we we remember this is the sole of the foot right whether we say s o u l or s o l e this is the sole right this is the underside we are not on the top right are you oriented properly right remember this is this is if this is the foot that's where we are dealing with this is the plantar surface right okay this is this is the dorsal surface that's the dorsal this one is plantar right i i am i hope you are properly oriented okay all right so let's draw that that short plantar would be like this correct right and on top of it and top of it that's where the long plant fine so that white one is short and this blue one is long plant. ligament okay good so no problem any time when if you if you find see there there is no problem in asking in case if you get disoriented and chances are that in in case of say there are only few areas say in abdomen yes it is the pelvis where it is very easy to get disoriented that where exactly are we talking about similarly in so, sole of the foot right and in head and neck though there there'll be so many areas so always always ask no problem right both origin same of short planter that's right that's right in fact in fact they are from the same bone A actually it is not exactly the same area say they are just oh, one above the another right so they are just one above the another but yes from the from the practical point of view you can always say yes they are same right. okay now see this one this one it is that notorious peroneus longus which was telling cuboid that boss let me wind around you and then i want to go to all the way because i got a long journey towards the base of first metatarsal right so here is that one 
This is Peronius longus tendon and this one right he'll go underneath he'll go underneath all the way and see here it's emerging out and landing on the base of base sorry base of m1 right that's where m1 base is right so this is the journey of that peroneus longus because see peroneus bravis to was sharif right it was just a short journey but this peroneus longus it travels all the way and that's where it it attaches okay now this is the big boss the plantar aponeurosis this plantar aponeurosis is a highly influential structure right and it has got very good connections with this tendo achilles so much so that there is a business relation with with this tendo achilles right tendo achilles so one is tendon one is ligament still they say ke we both would work together and he is also happy right and he is also happy so they both work together so let's see how do they work this is another view so this is a massive sheet of tendon like structure right and this runs for the whole length of the foot right so all the way all the way it runs so i just keep the keyword runs for whole length of whole length of foot now there is something interesting about it and it is that that also starts with calcaneum right that also starts with calcaneum but what about what about its insertion that insertion is that this plantar aponeurosis as it goes further right literally like those those say cruise missiles right it starts splitting up right it splits 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 and it splits into five divisions and then it goes towards those mp joint mp joint metatarsophalangeal joint right so here it is this is like this missile comes over here and then it splits right it splits it splits splits right and it goes like this so we have got m1 m2 m3 but this is happening at this is happening at m p joint now at mp joint there is something very interesting right there are it it splits right it splits splits in two at mp joint and yeah obviously five divisions right so every division is splitting but what it is forming what it is forming is this is first thing first this is the area where we have to go for bit of imagination these are metatarsophalangeal joint so all these metatarsals right they are transversely also connected so then so we are introducing one more character in this and this is this is let's say transverse metatarsal tarsal ligament so he is transverse but there is his his brother is also there right he is superficial so obviously he is the deepest so we'll give him that okay you are deep transverse metatarsal ligament and this goes all the way from m1 to m5 right mp joints 
so at mp joint where that plantar aponeurosis is coming and it is giving going into splits and then there is transversely there is a deep transverse metatarsal joint got it so here it is this one that this 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 all the way this is deep transverse metatarsal ligament so they are connected and then on top of it right there is landing of of that plantar aponeurosis now in between these plantar aponeurosis right we should not forget that there will be the flexor tendons they will be coming right flexor tendons those flexor muscles will be coming flexor hallucis longus flexor digitorum longus brevis all of them right now we'll just collectively call them flexors so when those flexors will be landing right because they are the structure which will be going for all the movements now this is the movement which is like all those delicate tendons will be entering so they do some nakhra they say that we should be having our own sheath right so that we all will be operating we all will be operating into that sheath so there is a flexor tendon sheath right there is a flexor tendon sheath so like those socks they enter and then in that sheath they move to avoid the friction so those flexor tendon sheaths they are here now i am zooming it right you will be able to appreciate a sort of gadda a sort of that that i think gadda is the best best word right that that's okay there is a sort of a depression or pit but it is more sophisticated word when we when we use this that this is a sort of gadda <laughs> that's where we understand that that's where flexor tendon sheaths are there and in these flexor tendon sheaths those flexor tendons will be giving a royal entry right so just remember this part it is the flexor flexor tendon sheaths are here what are here no doubt about it that when we'll be dealing with the muscles right at that point we'll be we'll be calling this this image again right but to remember it to understand it that's right okay to see with bit of more clarity this is individual mp joint right mp joint this is a classical individual mp joint second toe right so that's what we have taken apart with all the capsules intact why why we have done that because we want to emphasize two things in this the first thing is that see there is you remember in case of knee joint right there was a collateral ligament tibial collateral ligament fibular collateral ligament what are these collateral ligaments collateral ligaments are that when the movement is in one direction it should remain in that direction only right it should not be going from going on either side so from both the sides when the support is needed there comes this gentleman a collateral ligament right he is collateral ligament and there is a judua bhai on the opposite side also so these collateral ligament so that's why we'll say collateral let's say ligaments means this is one and another one right dot 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 dot, dot right he is there on to the other side so on both sides and they give a very strong support and this is what is happening at every mp joint right at every mp joint so imagine all those big structures right tibia and fibula and then they were they were all doing so much of dhamal these small joints they are so intricate right the way it was in hand the same way in the foot right every point and still more is yet to come right they do such designing and architectural work will you will be very happy to see that and see this is a cross section a cross section right of mp joint right? actually 
uh, we should say cross, no, cross would be like this. This is like longitudinal section, right? We can say, technically speaking, this is a longitudinal section along the long axis of the bone, right? Longitudinal division or the section. Okay. We see two important things in this. So, this one would be the dorsal aspect and this one would be the plantar aspect. Fair enough. Right. Now, this is the capsule. That's the capsule. This capsule is thin, right? Just by the looks itself, you can make it out, right? This is so thin, right? No big rocket science. But when you look at the plantar side, so thick, watch for it, right? Thick capsule. That's the thing which I want to say emphasize. That over here, why this is thick? Because say thanks to that plantar ligament, right? So it is this plantar ligament which is making that entire thing so thick. Here it is. Okay. Right. Now this plantar ligament, right, it has to enter, it has to land on this MP joint and this is the path, this is where, see, that's where it will come. It, that's the path of plantar ligament. But it's not so sida sada as it looks like. So we'll just rotate it to have a clear vision that where exactly it is connected. Now this gives a good idea, right? What really happens is that those tendinous sheath, right? They come, right? And then they split, right? And then they, they connect. So it it's like from here, right? That's, that's the attack, right? Now this entire troop, it divides into two parts and one goes on this side, right? And second goes on this side. What a strategy, right? That way, it will be giving a very good power, right? So that's how those tendinous sheaths, tendinous sheaths, they are attached. Now, at MP joint, right now, right, if you are wearing shoes, just remove the shoes because you have to do a small experiment. See, at MP joint, right, at MP joint in your foot, try to do, try to do the plantar flexion. Try to do plantar flexion. Once you try to do that plantar flexion, then try to do dorsiflexion up you will find that dorsiflexion is extensive you can take your take your those fingers right much more up as compared to that flexion this is to be understood right so i'm writing it but understand that plantar flexion right plantar flexion is is limited is limited and when you do dorsiflexion, right, when you take it up, dorsiflexion, it is extensive. I mean, relatively, right, related to plantar flexion. So, if that's your foot, you'll find that, okay, you'll be able to do it this. But when up, right, your fingers will, you'll be able to take the fingers quite up, right. You got this, right, this is... All these things, what I'm explaining, right, it'll, it has got that clinical significance. We'll, we'll talk that thing in more detail when we'll be talking about clinical part. Got it? So, so if you have not experimented it, do it so that you never miss it. Okay. Going further. Now, see this MP joint. Everything is fine. Everything is fine at MP joint. But here... 
we are talking about first one. This is first MP joint. So E is large, right? E is large. And there is something which is to be seen in this case. Over here, there are two sismoid bones, right? That's the area, right? There are two sismoid bones. And we have already talked about those sismoid bones. Sismoid means seed-like, right? They are like seed. So these are the sismoid bones and they are enclosed in plantar ligament. So enclosed in plantar ligament. See this, right? So that's how they are like sismoid bones. Okay. Now this is the plantar aponeurosis. That's what we are talking about. So I'll just write plantar aponeurosis, aponeurosis. And it is, you can say that it is dividing into those two slips, right? Two slips, two slips. And we need to see one important structure over here. This plantar aponeurosis, it is central. Right? It is central. It is strongest, no doubt about it. Right? It is strongest. And all the way, it acts as one in the action Right? It acts as one with tendo Achilles. So it happens like that and when the MP joint is straight, it is quite loose. Right? It is quite loose. And when the MP joint, we say that when it is dorsiflexed, when it is up, so it is extended and it is tight. Right? So this is tight when MP joint it is dorsiflexed dorsiflexed well in some books it is even written as extended right or the hyper extended right or the hyper extended so if we say this as flexion so then this is extension and hyper extension okay Now let me explain something over here. Actually, the muscles of of soul they are they are very easy, very very easy. See these muscles, right? Those muscles which will be acting on toes, right? So here, let's say we first deal with those extensors, right? Extensors. Or what they will be that they are causing dorsiflexion, right? No confusion. Dorsiflexion. They are divided into two parts. One, the long and second, those who are short. Those who are long, yes, they have to come from the leg. Then and then they can be long. So we know this part. This is extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus. In which compartment were they? Well, they were into the anterior compartment, right? Because if they are into anterior compartment, right? If they are into anterior compartment, then and then they will be landing onto the dorsum and then they pull it and they take the things up, right? That is the dorsiflexion. Those who are short, those who are short, right? They will be called as the brevis same name, extensor hallucis brevis. Same name, extensor digitorum brevis. So, brevis itself means that they are short. But this is, that's it. This story is just this much. Right? And then there will be few flexors. 
and then there will be few other muscles and, and the game is complete. Right? So it is not that complicated as it looks like. So let's see these muscles. The first one, we see that, see, there is a very smart game between extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus. So over here, once again, right, you will enjoy it, that this one is extensor hallucis longus, okay? extensor hallucis longus anterior compartment don't worry right we'll be watching its connect connections their origin insertion and and a zoomed one yes this is this is a right side right because it's like our our friend's right side so here it is first thing that it arises from so we are dealing with extensor hallucis longus right so extensor hallucis longus that's in between is interosseous membrane interosseous membrane plus plus the adjoining fibula right so this is the adjoining fibula that's where here so from there the extensor hallucis longus you must have noticed that those short ones whose belly is short they arise from the lower portion because then there will be a bigger muscle right whose belly is big will be landing all the way from the top and then he'll be covering it so that's what is happening even in this case watch it right Lying on the extensor hallucis longus is the bigger belly extensor digitorum longus because extensor digitorum longus has got all the right to do the dadagiri on extensor hallucis longus because he'll say that was you will be supplying only one big toe right I've got four toes right so that's why his belly is bigger so this one is extensor digitorum longus right um, extensor digitorum longus now it has got a bigger belly right it has got a bigger belly so he is lying on extensor hallucis longus now even if we have not yet seen extensor digitorum longus if we really try to see that from where it emerges if we really try to see its origin right that is easy that is easy and yes, hallucis longus was arising only from this lower portion, right? See, let me let me show you this image. Yes, see the lower portion, right? And then here is this extensor digitorum longus all the way, all the way from full moon, right? So this is its origin is on full fibula right we'll say full fibula all the way by the way you find something familiar over here right there is a gap so i think we have met this gentleman before this extensor digitorum longus is not a completely newcomer to us right we met him when we saw this gap and it is the gap for that common peroneal nerve got it right so this is a gap for common peroneal nerve right which divides into that superficial and deep right exactly so here it is let's go further to make things a bit easier Right? Though it is not needed here, but still we would add it. Extensor, extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, they are part of anterior compartment. Right? 
they are part of anterior compartment but when we are discussing it that tbl is anterior he tells that i am the big boss right not you so he is over here and this is tbl is anterior he tries to prove his superiority that okay this is my zone so he covers right he covers extensor hallucis longus right like that small fish medium size fish and the bigger fish right so bichara extensor hallucis longus so is way deep and extensor digitorum longus tried to do some dadagiri but then comes this big one tibialis anterior he covers everyone right so these are the three three uh, muscles of anterior compartment but wait 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 there was there was one more right but he is very innocent right he is like a child so and who was he right that bichara bichhda hua right that peroneus brevis and peroneus longus so they are laterally and this bichara third one right he is there into this anterior compartment and yes you must have guessed it he is peroneus third one right and if it is third so we call it tertius so peroneus tertius tertius means third i'm repeating certain things because let's say if someone has not seen that session so over here at least his doubt is clarified right so sometimes it happens because i got one mail on that that sometimes you say the point which was told even into the previous lectures also the intention is just this much that who knows if someone is watching this session uh, or if someone is attending for the first time right so with that intention at times i i repeat certain points so here it is this chhota bachcha right he is coming all the way and that's that's the peroneus tertius right that's the peroneus tertius so that's our entire anterior compartment so if we if we try to go all the way from deep initially it was hallucis longus extensor hallucis longus covered by extensor digitorum longus covered by tibialis anterior and then that innocent peroneus tertius right so this is our entire anterior component here is a better say zoomed version of it right so here we see these tendons now we'll play smart right what we'll try to do as such these are all four what these are the four tendons which are of anterior compartment right but we'll say that no we'll show you the tendons which are passing through extensor retinaculum are baba all the tendons they pass under the extensor retinaculum right so no big signs but still because we want to say say it in that way so here it is this one so tender tendons under extensor retinaculum nothing big right it is the same thing here it is it is going towards big toe so we'll call it extensor digitorum longus coming uh, i'm sorry hallucis longus digitorum nahi hallucis longus right is coming all the way from the and this one is the tibialis anterior right and then all these 1 2 3 4 right 1 2 3 4 they are like extensor digitorum longus and here is our that innocent bachcha and that is peroneus tertius done right now here say we will deviate slightly from our topic because this is this is really really interesting that's what the architectural thing what i was talking about right architectural thing and this architectural thing is that these extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus right they travel all the way from up so they are not interested in landing in just a simple way they need some royal treatment and that's where the beautiful structure and that is what is called as the extensor expansion or the extensor hood which comes into picture right so first 
let's see this is extensor helices longus fine no problems right it comes over here and now we are about to watch this area this area this is the area where there would be sorry <coughs> there would be extensor expansion okay so just i'm writing it over here we we just discuss in a minute what is extensor expansion right just a minute so just over here this extensor expansion it is at mp joint right it is at mp joint so extensor expansion this is a big toe so obviously extensor expansion of big toe because we are right now dealing with extensor helices longus so it will come right and then at the base over here at the base of distal phalanx it will put its final landing right so at the base of distal phalanx right there will be final landing so that's the journey all the way from here to this point okay but see extensor helices longus is a powerful one right when it contracts so it will be making all those movements so obviously if it is just the attachment and minor attachment so then there will be the bowing right those retinaculum they are preventing the bowing at at an ankle joint but now now so this is a long journey so in fact the muscle this tendon it can bow out it is not happening because there is someone who is over here preventing it right similarly all these right same explanation for extensor digitorum longus same all of them at the base of middle and distal phalanx right over here so it was only distal phalanx because it's big toe but over here again at at mp joint there is extensor expansion and through which it passes and then at middle and distal phalanx distal phalanges because they are more so we'll write phalanges right they'll be landing at their base so base of middle and distal phalanges that's where edl extensor digitorum longus would land now let's see that what we are talking about this extensor huh, this extensor expansion what exactly this extensor expansion is so there are several names of it right this extensor expansion we'll we'll see all those names later first let's understand what it is nothing big that's that's the mp joint what it really does is let's see this joint is important right when when those ligaments they will pull so they they are going to give a sharp movement so that's why let's protect them from all the sides so it is like band there are there are in fact three three types of band right so bands bands there are three types three types right and and this entire expansion is what it is nothing but a triangular aponeurosis triangle aponeurosis right and it is this aponeurosis which which very tightly it holds this particular this particular joint and then it tells all the extensor tendons that you you deal with us right you deal with us and you get attached on us and will be handling will be helping you in all the movements right so that's the triangular aponeurosis and now we'll see that how many types of fibers are there because see this see these joints will be working right so first one it is what is called as the there are three types of bands lateral bands so there are two right obviously on both the sides then there is a median band median band name itself will be in center and then there is a reticular this is oblique what an amazing construction right from this is the joint which we want to protect the lateral one so that's the lateral support lateral support then there is a median one 
and then on top of it for for that for the distal phalanx here it is these are the oblique fibers right these are the oblique fibers so for the middle phalanx there are oblique fibers which will be giving proper support and then all those extensor tendons they will be landing on them so they form a complete structure complete structure like this and this is bit triangular so that's what is called as the extensor expansion extensor expansion it is also called as right it's another name is dorsal digital expansion right whatever the name you give but it means the same it is also called as that uh, extensor hood it is also called as extensor hood right and and the main function the main function is that it allows that contractile forces of external muscles to to this phalanx so all those muscles right when they will be attached so it transfers so transfers contractile forces right so this is one and second because of this say these are these are the structures right same thing is 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 even into our our say palm so because of the shape triangular polyneurosis that is because of the shape uh while drawing is there any color code to follow for nerves muscles ligament tendons just like arteries and veins uh, while drawing mm, no no as such not right so many both original same of front yeah okay so so these are like say to prevent prevent that side to side movement and to balance the forces right to balance the forces across these phalanges that's also the function of this triangular aponeurosis so i will just say balancing balancing the forces right balancing the forces So here is what they will be doing. So this is extensor retinaculum, correct? Retinaculum. And we have this extensor helusis longus. This is extensor digitorum longus. But then we can see their cousins also here it is a very nicely emerging from here only emerging from the foot only and this one is let's welcome extensor helusis brevis and will give him the name that he is one of the short extensor right he is one of the short extensor so he'll be what he'll say right he is a chota muscle right so if, if this is a big toe right he'll be able to do this extension right fair enough and see can we see can we see someone hiding over here here right that's the belly and then as it proceeds see where they are going all those those small small tendons right see the small tendons they all are heading towards the towards the digits so here is the cousin of digitorum longus and he is extensor digitorum brevis so again he is also a short extensor correct he is also a short extensor <laughs> now this short extensor both the sides right there is a very classical thing about them. short extensors they are extensors of toes but they won't be able to do the dorsiflexion because for dorsiflexion the movement has to be done at an ankle joint right so that's how the dorsiflexion occurs so then it is the function of extensor helusis longus and extensor digitorum longus because they are connected on the top. So from there they pull 
so the entire food goes up so remember for their function right for their function right they can just do the extension of the toes right and here it is this is short extensors right that's the origin that's the origin so extensor helius is longus and extensor uh, so extensor helius is brevis and extensor digitorum brevis right so they they both study into the same school right so same same origin right so they are extensors but will they be doing dorsiflexion no way right technically not plus possible because for dorsiflexion it has to be the movement has to be at an ankle joint so that's where their big brothers they are there right uh still we have got some i think we are overshooting but no problem let's finish the topic as we have talked about extensors let's talk about flexors right because this will give the total totality into the completion of our topic so flexors of toes for, for so for flexors of toes there are two long flexors right two long flexors so they are you must have guessed flexor helicis longus and flexor digitorum longus do figure out flexor helicis longus and flexor digitorum longus they were into which compartment well they were into that that uh, deep posterior right because there was such a musical correlation between both of them so in that posterior compartment how we remembered that in anterior compartment there is tibialis anterior so here you'll say okay, okay i am tibialis posterior right there it was extensor helicis longus and brevis so here we have got flexor helicis longus and flexor digitorum longus and there there was that uh, innocent peroneus tertius so p for p so he also tells that we have got the popliteus correct let's start watching flexor helicis longus simple here it is flexor helicis longus but see extensor i tell you extensor helicis longus and extensor digitorum longus right they were so so good that they were good brothers not in case of flexors right they keep on fighting and they will fight right they will fight so badly i'll show you how so this is flexor helicis longus well things are good right and here it is this one is flexor helicis longus and where is it origin right origin on fibula right obviously on the back side yeah, that's on the back side flexor helicis longus can you recollect helicis means it will be going where it will be going on the big toe and it is emerging from where which side it is emerging from the fibula okay hang on right still ah uh, no okay we have to finish the topic so let's let's see this flexor digitorum longus right here it is flexor digitorum longus now this flexor digitorum longus it is medial to flexor helicis longus right it is medial to flexor helicis longus now this is not the proper orientation why because when we say here it is that flexor digitorum longus it is for digits which are on the lateral side and helicis that thumb right it is on the medial side while this is becoming ulta right so flexor digitorum longus this is from 
tibia right and and do you see a gap over here right this is a gap this is a gap for tendon of for tendon of tibialis posterior and what was the specialty of this tibialis posterior tibialis posterior was going over there and then it was fanning out right it was fanning out getting attached at so many bones so that's where we'll see it so here it is this one concept right this one concept is so vital this is this is flexor hallucis longus and this one is flexor digitorum longus right they both are completely reverse than what we accept expect it's because this will be the big toe and these are the small fingers right so this means they have they will be they'll be fighting at some point right and that's the point which is over here here it is it goes like this right and that is flexor hallucis longus and from here this is the flexor digitorum longus right so that's flexor digitorum longus so these tendons they cross over just below the ankle right so these tendons they cross over right below below the ankle let's see that right over here this is such a beautiful view right remember this is on medial side and on medial side right remember that tibial is posterior right tibial is posterior which will be when contracting it will be doing inversion right inversion so it has to come on posterior so this is this is that tibialis posterior right that one is flexor digitorum longus this one is flexor hallucis longus so it would be very interesting to see where exactly they both cross over right let's see that right we dig deep and here it is see the best part that's the crossover crossover and in this crossover it is the flexor hallucis longus which is at a deeper level and flexor digitorum longus runs over it right so here is the top one right flexor digitorum longus right so flexor digitorum longus is a bigger one so he does the dadagiri and he runs over this flexor hallucis longus just to remember this is deeper okay just few minutes more so here is flexor hallucis longus right now it is it is going all the way right and it is landing and that's the location of those two sismoid bones right those two sismoid bones were here so there the sismoid bones are there in between both of them that's where it lands here it is right that's the point so this flexor hallucis longus that's the insertion that's the insertion this is base of that distal phalanx right because this is hallucis so this is the proximal phalanx this is the distal phalanx so we'll just say base of distal phalanx right of big toe big toe similarly this is flexor digitorum longus right four tendons four fingers right four tendons four fingers 
and they will be going into those tendinous sheath and you can see those tendinous sheaths right so these are the tendinous sheaths this one this one this one right they are tendinous flexor sheaths so in that sheath they will travel and they will be attached again on the distal phalanx so that's the insertion right so insertion of flexor digitorum longus that is on the distal phalanx or the phalanges phalanges distal phalanges right so that is how they all are connected so thank you so much that's it for today right we meet tomorrow and we'll be going ahead with the rest of the portion right thank you so much and bye bye see you tomorrow and yes this file i'm saving and it will be placed into our shared folder within a minute thank you <laughs> yeah, you can say that. <laughs>